you know what I love? Comedies. Do you know what else I love? Sci-fi films. And when you put those together, what do you get? Something pretty fucking great. Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite sci-fi comedy movies of all time, in my opinion. I thought I did this top 10 list before, but I guess I didn't, so... Yeah, let's get to it. Here's my top 10 favorite sci-fi comedies, in my opinion. And as always, for a top 10 list, you gotta have your... Yeah. Oof, that was violent. Honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are About Time, Back to the Future 2, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, <laughs> The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, Starship Troopers, Time Bandits, The World's End, Army of Darkness, Spaceballs, Explorers, and Inner Space. All great films just couldn't make the top 10 list. But anyway, my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Idiocracy. Idiocracy is directed by, um... I'm blanking on his name. Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> Mike Judge. Oh my god, I can't believe I blanked on his name. Yes, the creator of King of the Hill, creator of Silicon Valley, the director of Beavis and Butthead to America, creator of the show Beavis and Butthead, and also gives Office Space. Like a lot of great films, a lot of great uh, television shows. Idiocracy is such a great, smart film with amazing social commentary. Basically, it's about a guy, Luke Wilson, and he gets frozen. He gets like transported to a thousand years in the future where everyone is pretty much stupid. And he becomes the smartest man in the whole world. And he's got like a very average IQ and stuff. And it shows you what society is almost like going to going through right now. And how society is almost dumbing themselves down because of like technology and everything. And how things are so much more simpler for people. Which is making them more and more dumb and less and less efficient. And less and less efficient, you know study and actually encourage their brain, you know, to experience more things and stuff like that. It, it, it shows you a lot about society and how this could actually happen. Maybe not to the extreme that this movie is, but it could really happen with our world and our society. And it's, it's hilarious. It's super funny. It's super clever. It's super smart and how stupid it is. And yeah, I love Luke Wilson, Maya Rudolph, Terry Crews, Dax Shepard. All of them are great. And it's just an all-around great film. Coming in at number 9 is Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Yes, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. This is the only Star Trek movie that is a straight comedy, and it is so funny. It's so great. I love this movie. This is uh, one of the two uh, Star Trek movies directed by Larry Nimoy, and he did Search for Spock, which was good, but this one was so much better. Basically, uh, the whole USS Enterprise, uh, basically have to get, you know, like... Um, a whale and stuff it brought back to their present day time so they have to basically time travel back into the 1980s and find themselves a whale and you know get themselves back home and stuff so it's them in the 1980s and yeah them experiencing the 1980s people who are listening to like rap music hardcore rock and roll a lot of swearing and drugs and just things that the enterprise crew are not used to and stuff especially like how they talk and stuff with their lingo especially 80s lingo and it's super funny this is such a funny film it's so clever it's so gr seeing like spock with his bandana and saying shit like i shit you not <laughs> only logical i shit you not it's so great uh all the scenes with mccoy at the hospital and stuff like how he looks at like how dated the hospitals are and how dated medical is and stuff it's just so great and i love it i love how he, how he cures um a patient just by like oh take one of these you'll be clear of your illness it's so great and I love it. I think it's such a funny, feel-good movie. And yeah, it's Star Trek, but it's it's a funny Star Trek movie. Code number eight is Attack the Block. Yes, Attack the Block. Uh, such a great film. Directed by Joe Carnish. Best film he ever directed. Really great art house sci-fi comedy. Basically about these, like, these kids in this uh, neighborhood, this block neighborhood. And basically, aliens attack their their neighborhood, and it's up to these like seventeen year old kids to defend their block against these really creepy, weird looking aliens. Or like one kid says, those creepy looking gorilla looking motherfuckers. <laughs> so great. Uh, this is uh, John Boyega. This is when most people were all introduced to John Boyega, and he's great as Moses. I love Nick Frost as the drug dealer, and I just love all these kids, and I just love all that shit they have to go through this film and. Yeah, it's, it's crass, it's violent, but it's a lot of fun. Coming to number seven is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yes, party on! 69, bro! 
pretty much about uh, Bill and Ted, uh, Eric Winter, and Keanu Reeves. Bro! <laughs> pretty much they have to pass history, or they'll fail, and if they fail, Ted will go to military school, so... And they meet a guy named Rufus, played by the great George Carlin, and he comes in this time-traveling phone booth, and basically says Bill and Ted are, like, big, historic rock stars in the future, and they need to pass history, so he gives them the time-traveling phone booth so they can travel back to all these times and learn about all the famous historic people throughout our ages and stuff, like Joan of Arc and Socrates and... Uh, Abraham Lincoln, just everyone, and it's just a fun movie. It's a ridiculous movie, but it is just so much fun. Coming number six is Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga. I love it. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I love the second one, but the first one is just so good. It's one of my, uh, probably one of the best comedy films in the MCU. It's right there with, like, Thor Ragnarok. It's just so funny. I love this team. It's very Firefly-esque, and just... I love it. I love Peter Quill, Drax, Rocket, Gamora, Groot. I am Groot. Uh, everyone gives a great performance. They all have just such good camaraderie with each other, great chemistry with each other. Yes, Ronan's a pretty shitty villain, but it's not really about him. It's about the heroes, and it's about their connection with each other. It's about the comedy. It's about the action. It's about the visuals. It's about the world building. And all of that's done beautifully in this film, and yeah, just, I love it. Coming to number five is Men in Black. Yes, Men in Black. Too bad there was not a lot of good Men in Black movies. The second one was shit. The third one was eh. And I'm not looking forward to that new one. It doesn't look all that great, even though it's got uh, it's got uh, Chris Hemsworth and stuff, which is cool and all, but ugh, it doesn't look great. Uh, but this one's great. I love Will Smith. I love Tom Lee Jones in this film. They both have great chemistry with each other. And it's just, it's funny, just the two of them, this very straight-laced, uh, this very, uh, typical straight-laced agent guy with Will Smith, who is just this very talkative police officer, you know, who just thinks he has mad skills and stuff, and they just work off each other really great. I love the villain in this movie, I love the comedy in this movie, and just... Yeah, I, I, I love the weapons and stuff, like the noisy cricket, and I love Rip Torn and Zedge. There's a lot of cool jokes in this film, and just, yeah, I like it. its visuals, its creativity, its comedy, its action, just, just an arm fun film, and yeah, too bad they could not never make a good sequel to it, but still, the first one, awesome. Coming to number four is Young Frankenstein. Yes, it's alive! It's alive! Ah, 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 ah. So great. Uh, Gene Wilder. Amazing. I love Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder's just... You can do no wrong Gene Wilder. I wish he did more movies in, in his later of his career, but yeah, the movies he did do were just so great. Blazing Saddles, Stir Crazy, Willy Wonka, Young Frankenstein. Just, this is just a great satire on the original Frankenstein. The way they do each scene is just so reminiscent of Frankenstein. It's almost like Frankenstein, but with all these like little mistakes and little changes and differences that equal up to satire and comedy, and it's so funny. Frankenstein. And I love how, like, Igor is very in denial of his hump and stuff. It's just super funny. And, like, the the, the, the inspector guy has, like, the fake hand and stuff. It's just so great. <laughs> the scene with the violin is awesome. The music's great. The atmosphere is great. The cinematography is great. Peter Boyle as the monster is also very great. Come on. That's the classic scene, that Put him on the race. It's so great. And even the ending of this movie... Super funny, super clever. Just, it's one of my favorite Mel Brooks movies ever, right there with Blazing Saddles. And just, it's just an all around great, great comedy. Coming to number three is Never Give Up, Never Surrender, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest is, it's incredible, it's incredible. This is, this is very much a satire of Star Trek. A lot of people say The Orville is like a satire of Star Trek, but it really isn't, actually. It's more of an homage of Star Trek. Well, just being uh, a comedy show that is an homage, but it's not a satire. This is more of a satire, and it's great. I love this movie. I love its characters. Come on, Alan Rickman as Dr. Lazar Lazarus. You got um, Jason Nesbitt, played by Tim Allen. You got Sigourney Weaver. You got Sam Rockwell as a guy. <laughs> uh, you got Tony Shalhoub. You got just all these great actors, great characters. Pretty much these actors that are in this show called Galaxy Quest, which was pretty much Star Trek. And they basically get, like, you know, visited by real aliens who thought the show was, like, historical documents, and they actually think they're real 
you know, space people who fight aliens and stuff, so these actors actually have to go to real space and fight real aliens, and it's just, it's so funny. It's so enjoyable, it's such a cool, creative idea, and it just, it's awesome. I really wish they made more sequels to this, but what we got was still great, and I love it. Never give up, never surrender. Conan number two is a tie, I can't decide, I, I just can't decide what I like more, so I'm just putting both as a tie. And that's Ghostbusters. And back to the future. Uh, I don't know. One, some days, like, I like Back to the Future more, and some days I like Ghostbusters more. So I'm just putting them both as a tie, because I, I can't decide. They're both incredible films. Like, Back to the Future, Back to the Future. Come on, it's Back to the freaking Future. 1.21 gigawatts, you're about to see some serious shit. Like, come on. I love it. Uh, go McFly, don't be so gullible, McFly. <laughs> just, come on. Biff, one of the most classic movie bullies, Marty McFly, Michael J. Fox, such a great performance, uh, Doc Brown, Christopher Lloyd's amazing, the soundtrack's amazing, the story's great, it's funny, it's visually creative, and just, it, it'll always be timeless to me and everyone, Back to the Future. In Ghostbusters, it even has some dated moments, I think the story and the comedy's still timeless, and it's funny, it's enjoyable. And all four of them are hilarious. Harold Ramis is so great in that movie. Uh, so is Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Rick Moranis, uh, Ernie Hudson, Scrooge Weaver. Everyone is fantastic. These two films are just like the pivotal sci-fi comedies. And they're most people's favorites. But they're a tie for my second favorite. And my number one favorite sci-fi comedy of all time is Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is, like, my favorite Bill Murray movie. It's my favorite Har Harold Ramis movie, and it's, I love everything about Groundhog Day. I love the concept, the idea, the the character development of uh, Phil is uh, so great. Phil? Phil? <laughs> Fuck the Tony Phil. <laughs> Just, it's me, Ned Ryerson. <laughs> I love it. Um... I love Bill Murray in this movie. I think this is one of his best performances, that with Lost in Translation. I think the writing is super good, super clever, and very, very funny. I love Andy McDowell. I think her chemistry with Bill Murray is spot on. I, I just love everything about this this uh, this movie and this idea and stuff. There are a little nitpicks here and there, but it's better not to nitpick it because it just ruins the magic of the film. The film is just so beautiful and so great and just... I can watch it every day, and it will always cheer me up, and it will always be something so great and so funny and so endearing and so timeless and just so feel good. Just I love everything about Groundhog Day. It's easily my favorite sci-fi comedy. So that was my top 10 favorite sci-fi comedies, in my opinion. So in the comments section below, please tell me, what are your guys' top 10 favorite sci-fi comedies? Did you read this top 10 list? Probably not, but that's why you gotta give me your favorites. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, and join the dark side.